The Care Plan in the CNA, a presentation by ForYourCNA.com. Welcome to Lakewood Nursing Home. Thank you for joining our team. Come on inside for orientation. We're sure that you are all great CNAs and you will provide excellent care for our residents. But before you get started, let's review some basics. You're a CNA, so let's take a moment to review what your job description entails. Does anyone know what the initials CNA stand for? Certified Nursing Assistant? That's exactly right, April. CNA stands for Certified Nursing Assistant. A nursing assistant is there to assist the nurse. That means that you will be receiving all of your instructions from the nurse and you must follow their directions. This will probably include taking vital signs and assisting the patient with personal care tasks. But you may also be asked to assist with other nursing procedures as well. It's important to only do things that you have been trained to do. If you aren't sure how to do something, ask someone for help. It's okay not to know everything. But please don't try to do something that you aren't familiar with. It might harm the patient. As a CNA, you will be expected to assist our patients with many routine tasks. Generally speaking, CNAs help patients with the things that they can no longer do for themselves. Things like toileting, grooming, bathing, dressing, eating, socializing, activities, and even sleeping. Together, these are all called activities of daily living, or ADLs for short. These are things that everyone does every day for a healthy life. But not all patients will be able to do these things for themselves because of illness or injury. Sometimes people are too weak to go to the bathroom on their own or feed themselves. That's where you come in. If the patient needs help with any of these tasks, you will be there to help them. But not all patients will need help with all tasks. Henry has had a stroke with right-sided paralysis. He needs help with eating, toileting, grooming, and dressing. Martha had a left hip replacement. She only needs help with bathing. Annie has dementia. She needs reminders and direction. And Bob is a diabetic with a recent leg amputation. He needs help with all tasks. Because every patient is unique, they will all have different needs. Some patients will need help brushing their teeth, but others will do that themselves. As a CNA, we will help the patients do the things that they cannot do alone. But we will let them continue doing the things for themselves that they can do. How will I know what I'm supposed to do with each patient? I'm so glad you asked, April. As the registered nurse caring for these patients, that's my job. When a patient gets admitted to our facility, I will do a head-to-toe assessment. I will review all body systems to evaluate the patient for real problems and potential problems. This is a very long, complicated process, but here's a brief overview of a general assessment. I'm going to look at his neurological status. Then I'll evaluate his cardiac status, followed by his respiratory system, I'm also going to look at his integumentary system, which is his skin, hair, and nails. The gastrointestinal system controls digestion. And then his urinary system will be evaluated. His musculoskeletal system is also important. And then the endocrine, lymphatic, and reproductive systems will all be evaluated as well. Finally, I will review the doctor's orders for this patient. I will use all of this information to determine the patient's real and potential problems. Here's an example to put it into perspective. Let's say this patient has just had a right hip replacement. Now, we know that she will need to continue her activities of daily living, or ADLs. 
She still has to eat, drink, go to the bathroom, bathe, groom, and dress. And after my assessment, I know she did all of those things herself until today. But the doctor's order says she cannot get out of bed for any reason for three days. So, since we know she must stay in bed, I have to figure out how to meet all of her ADL needs. As the RN, I will take all the information I gathered during the assessment to figure out the best way to help her. She has an incision, so I need to change the dressing every day, per the doctor's order. But I also need the whole team to let me know if they notice any bleeding, odor, or if the patient feels warm, which could indicate an infection. She can feed herself, but the trays must be brought to her in bed. She can't sit all the way up because of the surgery, but she can't eat lying flat either. She has dentures, so they must be within reach at meal times and clean daily. I also know she is at risk for constipation since she's not moving much and she's on pain medication. That's a potential problem that we'll need to address. She can't get out of bed, so I also have to figure out the best way to meet her elimination needs, bedpan or catheter. She's able to clean herself as long as the supplies are brought to her, but she can't reach her legs or feet, so she'll need some help with that. So I will use all this information to develop a care plan specifically for her. Every single aspect of her health, condition, and ability level will be evaluated in order to help her. Even the smallest decision can have long-term consequences. The RN will write down all of her recommendations for the entire healthcare team to follow. This is called the care plan and it must be followed exactly. So every patient will have a different care plan? That's correct, Ben. Every care plan will be different because every patient will be different. Even patients that seem alike because they have a similar diagnosis or have had the same surgery may have differences in care. So as a CNA, your responsibility is to read and follow the care plan for every individual patient. In fact, you could say that your job is to follow the care plan, the whole care plan, and nothing but the care plan. Do you think you can do that? Can you follow directions exactly? Absolutely. I can. Sure. Awesome. Then you're well on your way to being a great CNA. But helping patients with ADLs isn't all that you will do. You are also there to help nurses by making observations. The CNAs are the hands and the feet of the patient. If the patient is cold and cannot reach their sweater, you will get it for them. If the patient can't brush their own teeth, then you will brush them for the patient. If the patient can't get up to shower, then you will help them stay clean. You will become their hands and feet to help the patients with things that they can't do for themselves. But you are also the eyes and the ears of the healthcare team. You will report everything you see, hear, smell, or feel to the nurse. This is the most important task you have as a CNA. If you see redness around a wound, you must report it. If you hear a patient wheezing after walking to the toilet, you must report it. If you feel that a patient's skin appears warmer than usual, you must report it. If you notice a patient is coughing a lot when eating, you must report it. As the CNA, you will be spending much more time with the patients than the nurse does. So you will be in a position to notice a lot more about the patient since you're spending more time with them. The nurse needs this information to make decisions about the patient's care. Reporting these observations gives the nurse another opportunity for assessment. That new assessment may even change the tasks you're assigned to perform. Here's a visual example of the care process. And here's how it works. The RN assesses the patient and develops the care plan. This gives you specific tasks to do. 
While doing these tasks, you'll notice things. You'll report these observations to the RN. The RN performs another assessment to review the changes in the patient. That new assessment prompts changes in the care plan. That gives the CNA new tasks to do. And the cycle continues around and around as the patient gets better or worse. This is a continuous process until the patient is discharged. I'm not sure I understand. Are you saying the care plan is going to change all the time? Yes, it could, depending on the needs of the patient. Let me give you an example. The care plan told you to make an occupied bed in room 201. As you change the sheets, you notice that the skin on the patient's backside was red and irritated. You notified the nurse, who then reassessed the patient. The nurse decided that the patient needed to be repositioned every two hours around the clock. This was added to the care plan as another task for the CNA. Using this model, we can respond to the needs of the patient quickly as their needs change. But it can also work for patients that are getting better too. You've been assigned to assist Mr. Hopkins with transferring out of bed and into a chair after surgery. But you notice he isn't leaning on you any longer. You notify the nurse. The nurse reassesses the patient and decides that the patient can transfer on his own now. The care plan is changed and this task is removed from the care plan since the patient is improving. Doesn't this mean that I'm going to be bothering the nurse all the time? Won't they be annoyed? The nurse should never be annoyed with you for reporting changes in the patient. They are legally liable for every aspect of that patient's care. Since the nurse requires that information to plan the patient's care, they expect to receive updates from you on the changes that you see. But how often you will have to report changes to the nurse will depend on the setting that you are working in. Here, in our nursing home, the patients are pretty stable and don't really change all that often. That's pretty common for long-term care facilities, like nursing homes and ALFs. But in other settings, like hospitals, rehabilitation centers, and hospice, patients' health can change very rapidly. In those settings, nurses and CNAs are going to work closely and constant communication is required. Since CNAs must follow the care plan and are not allowed to alter it, they can't solve problems. The RN is ultimately legally responsible for the care of the patient. If you have information about that patient that you're not giving to the nurse, the patient can suffer. And the nurse is legally liable for that. Remember that you are an assistant. You are there to help. But the nurse is always in charge of the patient. So all changes, regardless of how minor they seem to you, must be reported to the RN. When a patient is stable, you will not have much to report and may go days without talking to the RN. But if you notice something, then it must be reported, even if you don't think it matters. If you aren't reporting observations, the nurse can't rely on you anymore. And if the RN can't rely on you, then you aren't a good assistant to that nurse. As the CNA, you are required to report to the nurse when a patient refuses care, when a patient complains of pain, when a patient complains of anything else, such as nausea, dizziness, shortness of breath, or confusion, any increase or decrease in symptoms, any changes in energy, any changes in sleeping patterns, changes in appetite or eating patterns, changes in toileting, mental status, or any odors that you notice, any changes in skin temperature, like the skin gets warmer or cooler, changes in skin color, any wounds, rashes, scratches, bruising, etc., any patient requests that are outside of the care plan, and any other changes that you notice. Be a good assistant and report all changes and observations. That's the most important job you have. So the care plan is developed by the RN, gives the team tasks, CNAs follow the care plan, and report changes. Let's recap what we learned today. 
Can you tell me how a CNA knows what each patient needs? The, the care, care plan. plan. As a CNA, you follow the care plan, the whole care plan, and nothing but the, the care, care plan. plan. Anything unusual that you notice about the patient, you must report it to the, the nurse. nurse. Great job. Let's take a little quiz to see if you truly understand your role here. The care plan states the patient must remain upright from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. every morning. It is now 8.05 a.m. and the patient states that she has a backache and asks if you could please help her back to bed. What does the CNA do? A. Return the patient back to bed. B. Refuse to put the patient back in bed. C. Notify the nurse. Or D. Complain to the other CNAs that your nurse is mean to make the patient sit up for that long. Although it makes sense to explain to the patient why you cannot return her to bed, the term refuse makes B the wrong answer. Jenny, do you want to change your answer? Correct. C is the correct answer. Great job. Any pain must be reported. The RN needs to know that the patient is having pain and wants to return to bed. The CNA does not know that the patient takes a medication every morning that requires the patient to remain upright to prevent ulcers from developing in the esophagus. Because you don't have all the information, you could accidentally cause the patient harm by not following the care plan. Always follow the care plan. Let's try another question. The care plan instructs you to perform passive range of motion exercises to the left leg twice daily. The CNA thinks, I don't want this patient to lose muscle mass because he is confined to bed. Maybe I should exercise all extremities just in case. What should the CNA do? Exercise the left leg only. Exercise all extremities. Exercise the legs only, or don't perform any exercises because that's physical therapy's job. Correct. A is the correct answer. Great job. We have to follow the care plan exactly. The care plan only instructs us to perform exercises on the left leg. The CNA doesn't know that the patient has a blood clot in their right leg which could become dislodged with movement, which is why the patient is confined to bed. Because you don't have all the information, you could accidentally cause the patient harm by not following the care plan. Always follow the care plan. Let's try another question. The care plan states, take the patient's radio pulse for one full minute and record your reading. The CNA asks another CNA, I have to take the patient's pulse. How long do you usually count for? The second CNA replies, 15 seconds and multiply by four. It's faster. What should the CNA do? A, count for 15 seconds and multiply by four. B, count for 30 seconds and multiply by two. C, count for one full minute or D, refuse to count the pulse because that's the nurse's job. Although it is a commonly accepted practice to count the pulse for 15 seconds and multiply by four, for this patient, it's not appropriate. April, do you wanna change your answer? Great job. C is the correct answer. We have to follow the care plan exactly. The care plan specifically instructs us to count the pulse for one full minute. What the CNA doesn't know is that the patient has an irregular heartbeat and we need an accurate pulse rate to determine if medication should be given. Because you don't have all the information, you could accidentally cause the patient harm by not following the care plan. Always follow the care plan. Let's try another question. Care plan calls for us to restrict fluids to water and juices only. 
The patient requests, could you please go get me a diet soda from the vending machine? The CNA is not real sure. The patient then states, there are no calories in a diet soda. Here's $20, keep the change. The CNA thinks to herself, well, since there's no calories, what should the CNA do? A, offer the patient water or juice and notify the nurse. B, give the patient a diet soda. C, put apple juice in an empty diet soda can instead. Or D, tell the patient's doctor that he is non-compliant. Correct. A is the correct answer. Great job. Stick to the care plan and let the nurse know that the patient is requesting something else. The CNA doesn't know that the patient is undergoing expensive tests that are affected by artificial colors like those found in soda. Because you don't have all the information, you could accidentally cause the patient harm by not following the care plan. Always follow the care plan. P.S. The nurse needs to know that the patient is requesting soda because he may ask another person, like a family member, to go get him a diet soda. Always report your observations. Last question. Care plan states to give the patient a partial bed bath. Do not use deodorant, lotions, or powders. The CNA states, wow, your skin sure is dry. Do you usually apply lotion? The patient says, yes. The lotion I use is on that table. What should the CNA do? A. Apply lotion to the patient's dry skin. B. Notify the nurse. C. Leave the lotion where the patient can apply it later. Or D. Tell the patient that lotion isn't allowed anymore. There's a reason why the care plan says not to apply lotion. Leaving it for the patient to do themselves is not appropriate. Would you like to change your answer, Ben? Correct. B is the correct answer. We should notify the nurse. Great job. We have to follow the care plan exactly. The care plan specifically instructs us not to apply lotion. The CNA doesn't know that the patient is going to have a test that can be affected by lotions, powders, or deodorants. Because you don't have all the information, you could accidentally cause the patient harm by not following the care plan. Always follow the care plan. So the care plan is developed by the RN, gives the team tasks, CNAs follow the care plan, and report changes. Follow those simple rules and you will be a great CNA and a valued member of our team. I know you will all do great here, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you.